Hi, my name is Nathan, and today we're gonna to do a comic book review of Bunny Mask, issue number two. Brought to you by Rated Comics. Let's get to it. Okay, so before we get into this, disclaimer alert, this is the most WTF comic book I've read to date, but in a good way. Here we go. So in the beginning, we, find, we start off with Taylor, the doctor, examining an x-ray of a hand and telling Effie, the test on your hand came out fine, definitely some muscle strain, but no real damage. They, some dialogue exchanges, and he just jokes with her like, hey, stay out, Don't no more bar fights, all right? Oh, whatever, doctor, you know, just cool banter. Then she notices the bunny mask statue on his shelf, and she asks him about it. I love your new statue. He's like, new, what? And he doesn't recall where he got it from, and she's like, well, I guess memory just kind of plays tricks on you. And he's like, no, honestly, I don't know where I came from. Maybe my friend B gave it to me. I don't recall. She makes statues like this. And B is the daughter of Leo from issue number one, where Leo claimed he was talking with Snitch in his head and going cr crazy with thoughts, making Leo, I mean, making Taylor and B, his daughter, this was 14 years ago in issue number one, digging a hole in the cave. And then we have this flashback where Bunny Mask kills Leo shotguns him in the leg and she licks the wound from his leg until complete healness but he has vague memory about it now whenever bunny mask appears she always when she appeared in issue number one she starts off with this question is there a sickness and well she licks his leg it's healed but it's just like the craziest weirdest wtf thing so back to present day now we're in a playground with children and there's a baby girl there you know someone's daughter and we meanwhile in the cabin behind the father, Chuck, is with the kidnapper that he commissioned, tells him, you know, what I'm thinking is we try to get my girl to come home with us, nice and simple and sweet, but if things go weird or you see a teacher, just bag her and get on with it. That way, we'll see what my ex-wife does about it when I have custody of my daughter the way it should be. You know, kidnapper's like, yeah, but your ex-wife was banging, bro. Like, hey, you know what? Don't talk about that like that. You know, if my first girl to give me a kiss, first girl to betray me. The story behind his ex-wife is she took away, she messed up his life because she had this role of no drugs in the house. So he was holding some drugs for his friend, boys, we boys, he put it on the top shelf. She discovered it. She has a no a zero tolerance policy about that. Meanwhile, it, it, the thing is in that cabin, it gets green. Now it's like a time warp or positional warp or different. I don't know what it is, but they're warping into a different location. And we hear Bunny Mass says, is there a sickness? Now they're inside this cave, very identical, similar selling to issue number one. And meanwhile, there's a window out there to the outside. Just jump out the window. So they're tripping out what it is. And meanwhile, they're like, kidnappers like, dude, it ain't me. Did you slip me something? No, nah, bro. Bunny Mask runs, hides behind the corner in the shower. Then she emerges. I am holding tight to your shadows, filling them thrash. I'm from the cave where the light never spoke. And they're like, F this, I'm shooting her. But she's immune to the bullets and decapitates the kidnapper's head. Put Chuck, the daughter's father, in a chokehold, lifts him up. I am Bunny Mask. I am the last girl of all girls to give you a kiss. Her dialogue and her speech is just off, but it's weird and just intriguing in a way. And we you all know, in downtown, we see Taylor or Tyler talking on the phone with his roommate saying that he's gonna go on a date with this girl B. And they're like, okay, one date's cool, that's catching up. Two dates, maybe you'll catch up on the second date, but third or fourth or fifth, you gotta seal the deal, bro. You get a banger or what? Okay, as a girl, if you have a girl as a roommate, all formalities are out the way, you know? So, but we see in this black dialogue box, Tyler Jenkins, a vessel returns, a mouth opens. And it's the same, and that's Bunny Mask talking to him telepathically, very similarly how, to how Leo was being talked to telepathically, like the snitch wants us to do this. We gotta dig more caves. You gotta keep digging in that cave for the snitch. But it was like mission number one, it made you question if Leo was crazy or deranged or what. Now Tyler is wondering the same thing. So he goes into this cafe, has a really good date with B, and you know, they talk 12 30, 1 o'clock, 1 30, 2 15, 3, 3 30. It is all kosher. Tuesday, they go on karaoke. Thursday, more day. Friday, B invites him to her studio. Saturday, horseback riding. It's just an awesome week of dating. Sunday, he's sitting at home. He's talking on the phone with B, but meanwhile, Bunny Mask telepathically talks to him, says, You sink a hook in the truth and you drag it out of their throats. What are you, like, this is the weirdest thing. Monday, date, Wednesday, every secret has a body to bury, but every secret is an open grave. Are we speaking in riddles? What the, f 
like I said, the most WTF moment in the book. Saturday morning, this part of the book, I mean, the, don't get me wrong, the dialogue in here is funny. And this is the only book where you can turn something as simple, as delicious as pancakes, but make it into a sexual innuendo. So Tyler's roommate's like, hey, did you hit it yet? No, man, well, look, like these pancakes, man, the two of you should start slapping each other like pancakes. We're both adults here. What are you playing here? Like, don't, don't try to be a gentleman. But at this point, she's like, are you gonna slap her pancake? You're gonna eat some pancakes. And I'm like, okay, I don't know if I'm hungry or horny at the same time, maybe both, but <laughs> only this book can make pancakes and innuendos come cool. Downtown, Tyler's walking, and then all this telepathic, like bunny, uh, bunny mask can't take anymore. She starts just rambling off him, and we get this green, in, in tra not in trash, but this green time dimensional warping or whatever it is. It took, and, and this is what bunny mask is telling him. Don't love her anymore. It wasn't locked under the floorboards where she'll never find it added a tiny little thing to her tattoo and she'll never notice it. It screamed, it screamed, it screamed. And this is, a, and then all of a sudden it just whites out. And Tyler, Tyler's like, what? And then in the beginning of the book, we see <laughs> Leo, who was beginning an issue, who was killed in issue number one, who died in the cave, just to, like tells him to like, go this way, Yo, he'll guide you. What? It's good, it's all right. He Tyler wakes up in the bed, in the cave, and just trips out. Now he's in a, ice storm then he's in an uber car with a cab driver the uber driver is telling there's candy in the bowl back there don't forget to give me five stars what he goes into his room opens the door now his roommate and his patient effie are on the bed looking like it's about to threaten him with the menage a trois but there's pizza on the counter pizza and huh so tyler's like okay how's your hand doing effie is your hand feeling better and she's like, I don't know. I'm so high on ecstasy right now. It could be hurting like a bitch, but I wouldn't care. So you two dating then? Dating? Oh no, we're just topless friends. No, you're not because your tops are still on, but I get where you're going with it. I'm just saying I'm calling a, a topless topless when I or topless with top on when I see it. So Tyler goes into his room, opens the door, notices another bunny portrait, calls his friend B, the artist, the girl from the cave and issue one. Did you send me this? No, okay. Then he goes to sleep. And then these voices from Bunny Mash just haunt him. I know where the pills were, like a pocket of me a skin. The light went out from her eyes, changed the past from my phone. I pissed in through her window, carved a little piece of mercy from her. It's just like the weirdest weird dialogue context patterns ever. He wakes up, there's Bunny Mash just, it doesn't look like she's threatening at this point, but this girl's nothing to be met with, messed with. And they have this dialogue and she's like, oh crap, you're real. You know, I, I thought you were just a figure of my imagination from 14 years ago. She's like, nothing is real. Touch me. Does this one's flesh feel real? And he touches her and then it looks like he's about to, mm, you know, go in. I mean, I guess, I mean, lonely at night. It's, it's. I mean, freaks come out at night, I guess, especially bunny masks. So he asks her questions and what's she all about? The dialogue is just different. It's definitely what WTF, but we don't know what what this is all about. And it's not WTF like you don't want to read any more of this book. You're just going to put it down and not even look at it again. It's WTF in a way that you want to continue reading this book because you don't know how it, it throws you off guard, but it keeps you intrigued. With that being said, I thought the book was great. It's just different WTF, but in a good way, like come on in, stay in, and you don't want to leave because you, yeah, you want to see where this goes. With that being said, Bunny Mask, issue number two. Comment below if you read the comic. What did you think of the comic book? If you haven't gotten a copy of your comic, go ahead and get your copy from ratedcomics.com, link in description. If you like the content we're throwing up, with the occasional comic book related content and comic book giveaways with also awesome comic book reviews you know what to do this comic book is well worth it just go along for the ride that's all i can say trust me actually yeah trust some dude on the internet right okay it's you won't be disappointed that's all i'm saying thanks again for watching until next time